Hi. Okay, um, new lesson. Uh, we are looking at something called IV characteristics. Um, and we're looking at the IV characteristics of particular electrical components. Um, so what we have to do is uh, I'm going to introduce you to those electrical components. And then I'm going to show you what happens when you change the I and the V, the current and the potential difference. So um, each component will have its own uh, shape when you change uh, the, the current or the voltage through it. So uh, if you were to make a graph of how the current and voltage changes, it would be different for each of those. And you can use these graphs to work out what component you have. Uh, but that's for the whole lesson. So let's start off. Uh, with the starter questions, uh, so I'm reading through, you pause, write down the answers. Okay, uh, first one, electricity is a flow of, what is it a flow of? What is the equation to work out charge? What is the letter you use to represent charge? What do you measure current with? What is the proper term for voltage? And what equation links, links a voltage current? and resistance. Uh, if you pause, uh, you can write down the answers and then unpause when you've done it. Excellent. Okay, so what is electricity? It is a flow of, well, if you look at the next question, it's quite easy. Electricity is a flow of charge. Like that. What is the equation to work out charge? Uh, Q is equal to I times t. Charge is current times time. What is the letter used to represent charge? We've already shown you that in the previous one, q. What do you measure current with? You measure current with a device called an ammeter. What is a proper term for voltage? Actually, that's a badly phrased question, because voltage is a thing. Voltage is the measurement. But when we're talking, people often use the word voltage incorrectly, and what they're actually talking about is they're talking about the potential difference. And the last one is what equation links current, voltage and resistance? Uh, the equation is V is equal to I multiplied by R. Hopefully you've got the words. I'm going to take a pen color from the red. Like, there we go. Um, so we're going to review, and quick question reviewing, what happens when you change part of a wire? See how it affects resistance. Last lesson, you looked at uh, an experiment that you could do if you're in school to determine the resistance of a wire. Um, but the resistance of the wire changes depending upon different factors, and these are some of the factors. I'm going to show you some things, and you're going to fill in the missing words to so the material. Different materials have different resistances because some materials are better. Missing word. There is a missing word. Nichrome wire has a something resistance than copper wire. That'd be like one. That'd be like two. So some materials are better something. Nichrome has a something resistance than copper of the same size. Length. The something wire, the higher it's what are these words we're talking about? We're talking about in relation to length. When electrons travel on the wire, they can something with more metal ions than in a something wire. If they go down a long wire, they can, what do they do with these metal ions? A something wire has a higher resistance than a so it's comparing thickness. Is a thin wire higher resistance than a thin wire? Is a thin wire higher resistance than a thick wire? Or the other way around. And the last one is temperature. The something, the temperature of a wire, the higher it's metal ions do something at higher. And so collisions with electrons are more likely to happen. Again, another opportunity for you to pause, write down those words. Don't copy the whole thing out, just write down the words. Go. Check. Excellent. Looks like you've done all of those. Uh, let's just check those answers. Here we go. Different materials have different resistances because some materials are better conductors. Nichrome has a higher resistance than copper of the same size. Some materials are better conductors. If you're a better conductor, 
you'll have a lower resistance if you're a worse conductor, you'll have a higher resistance. The longer a wire, the higher its resistance. You saw that in the experiment last time. When electrons travel down the wire, they collide with more metal ions than in a short wire. And we talked about that in terms of thinking about walking down a corridor. If you have to walk down all the way down a corridor and it's full of people, you're much more likely to bump into people than if you just have to move a short way down the corridor from one room to the next. A thin wire has a higher resistance than a thick wire. Again, the corridor example works really well. If you're walking down a corridor and it's really narrow, you can only fit two people side by side. Um, it's going to be a lot harder to get down the corridor when between lesson changes than if you've got a really wide corridor that can fit 10 people wide. Um, because a wider corridor uh, has more space for those electrons or you to move down, so the resistance is lower. A thin wire has less space, so it's more difficult to often have resistance. And the last one, temperature. The higher the temperature, the higher its resistance. This makes sense, because we know, this next bit says, metal ions vibrate at higher temperatures. We know as things get hotter, they vibrate more. So if you're going down the corridor uh, and everyone's just standing still, it's going to be easier to get past than if you're going down the corridor and everyone's flapping their arms around and dancing wildly. So at higher temperatures, there is a higher resistance because they vibrate more at higher temperatures. And so collisions with the electrons are more likely to happen. Okay, that's a good resistance review. Uh, so we did these last time. Uh, we did the current uh, resistance for um, some resistors. And if you did it for a resistor and you plotted the graph, you got a nice straight line graph. Uh, but if you look at this graph, you'll notice that it's not a straight line. In fact, if you join the points for a line of best fit, it's very much the opposite of a straight line. This is a curved line. And this is for a bulb. And bulbs don't behave like resistors because as the resistance increases, um, as the sorry, as you put more um, potential difference across the wire, uh, the current goes up, the resistance increases. So you've got to think about it like this. As I push this potential difference along, the current increases. So that means more electrons are traveling down the wire. Now, if I put more electrons down the wire, those electrons are more likely to collide with the atoms or the metal ions that make up. And if you collide with something, what's going to happen to it? Its temperature is going to go up. It's going to make them hot and it's going to make them vibrate. So as you put more current in, um, the thing gets hotter. And as it gets hotter, it vibrates more. And as it vibrates more, that makes it harder for the... Uh, electrons to get down. So what happens is you keep, this is potential difference, you're putting a lot of electrical energy into the wire and at the start it's fine. At the start the current goes up like this and almost a straight line. But then as it gets on, as it gets hotter and hotter, this line starts to level out, which means as I get up here, you can see it's almost like a straight line, but in the other direction. I'm putting loads and loads more potential difference, but I'm getting hardly any current. And that's because in this section here, the wire is so hot, the atoms are vibrating so much, the electrons can't get down. So the resistance has gone from down here, quite a low resistance, low resistance down here, nice straight line. Then as you get up here, a really high resistance because um, uh, the current has made the wire so hot that the electrons can't travel down the wire. Um, so as the wire gets hotter, its resistance gets higher, which means less current can flow, and so the temperature rises. So as the temperature rises, the current is not proportional. So before we had a nice straight line graph for a resistor, a bulb is very much not a straight line graph. That's how you know it's a bulb, because a bulb has this particular shape. The higher the temperature, the higher the resistance. We did that on the previous slide. Uh, another option for you to fill in some missing words. Let's check this. Fill in the gaps, complete the sentences, and use words in the box to help you. Uh, again, you will just write the words down in the correct answer. I don't want you to copy all of this out. Okay. Um, so you need to fill in the missing words. The letter I, that's I, is used to represent something flowing through a component in a circuit. The letter V is used to represent 
something else across the component. The current potential difference graph, IB, can use to find the something of a component. The current is plotted on the something, and the potential difference is plotted on the something else. A circuit must contain an ammeter to measure the, and a something else to measure the potential difference. Just write down those words for the answers in the correct order. I'll wait. Okay, hopefully you've got the correct answers. So, oh, that's gone too far. Oh, here we go. Uh, I is used to represent the current flowing through a circuit. V is used to represent the potential difference. That often catches people out because uh, V is for voltage normally. The current potential difference graph can be used to find the resistance. Ooh, the resistance of the component. That's the gradient. The current is plotted on the y axis and the potential on the x axis. I've been lazy just by writing y and x. A circuit must contain an ammeter to measure the current and a voltmeter. to measure the potential difference. Check. Okay, so um, there are different types of resistors. Uh, you know about the first one, you know about the resistor, the plain and simple resistor looks uh, not too dissimilar to the symbol. A variable resistor, the symbol is similar, it's got an angle going through it about 45 degrees, they look very different. A resistor and a variable resistor look very different. Now, some of these other things, uh, you will probably have loads of these in your house. You just probably won't have seen them because they're normally inside things. A thermistor um, is a symbol of a resistor with a kind of tick through it. It's a thermal resistor, a resistor that works relating to heat. Thermistor, thermal resistor, a heat related resistor. The next one, it seems pretty obvious, a light dependent resistor. A resistor that changes its resistance in light. And again, it seems fairly obvious. And a diode, which is kind of a resistor in some ways. Um, it's a, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> uh, it has a special symbol, which is a, an arrow and a little uh, line. And actually what it does is it only allows the electric current to flow one way around the circuit. Uh, if you put a diode in the wrong way, it won't allow the current to flow. Uh, diode, you will have many of these in your house as LEDs. The D in LED stands for diode. A light dependent resistor, uh, oh, yeah. if you have something that is a kind of light activated, it will have a light dependent resistor. And a thermistor, if something that has a power, um, has a heat switch in it, a washing machine, a tumble dryer, um, maybe even your kettle or toaster will have a heat thermistor in. So when the temperature gets to a certain level, the thing goes off. Uh, heaters will work like that as well. Okay, so um, to do this, uh, what I would do is in reality, if we're in a classroom, we would do an experiment. And the experiment would be uh, setting up a circuit and then uh, you measure the current and the voltage in that circuit using a um, voltmeter and an ammeter. And then um, we get the result and then we plot it into a graph or we put it into a spreadsheet and that will make a graph for us. We can't do that. But what you can do is try and remember what does the circuit going to look like. So I want you to draw a circuit uh, with a battery, an ammeter, a voltmeter, a variable resistor, and a diode. The voltmeter must be put so it can read the diode's potential difference. And the circuit must work. That's the trickier part. I mentioned that diode has to be arranged correctly. Uh, if you don't have that correctly arranged, um, the circuit won't work. So pause, draw that circuit on your piece of paper, and then unpause when you're done. Check. Okay, uh, here's one I have made earlier. This uh, is the circuit. So uh, we've got a battery at the top. So here's our battery, uh, like this at the top, a five volt battery. Um, uh, we know a battery because it's got a long line and a short line uh, like that. Uh, I did this on a web program. Um, so they're not uh, exactly the same as we might do sometimes. I've got an ammeter, the ammeter has to be in series. We talked about that before, you have to put an ammeter in series to measure the current. 
A variable resistor here, here is a variable resistor. It's a normal resistor symbol with an arrow going through at right angles. And then here is my diode. And the voltmeter has to be placed over the top of the diode. So as in you've got one connection on one side and another connection on the other side. So it can read the difference in the voltage across the diode. Now I've made this diode uh, this way because it's correct for the way the current flows but it's not correct for the way the electrons flow. We talked about that before, the difference between current and electron flow. Um, because if this battery, this long one is the kind of plus side, and this short one is the negative side. Now, again, we mentioned that electric current actually flows the wrong way around a circuit. Electric current goes from positive to negative. Electric current goes from Positive to negative, sorry, my phone is beeping. Um, uh, going from positive to negative, we know that's not correct um, for an electron because well, what's the charge of an electron? An electron is negative. So an electron won't go to the negative terminal, the battery, because it's negative, so it would be repelled from the negative terminal. So the um, uh, electrons go from the positive, the electrons go the other way around, but when you're drawing the circuit, you have to draw it in relation to the electric current, and the current goes from positive to negative. So if I put it this way, the diode will work in this circuit. And okay, so a diode is uh, this is what it looks like. Um, it's about the same size as a resistor, so it's quite small, apart from an LED, a light emitting diode, which looks even smaller. Um, it allows current only to flow in one direction. If you put it in the wrong way in a circuit, it has almost, well, it has infinite resistance. So if you look at this part of the graph here down the bottom, um, if I'm, so going across this is increasing the voltage, but like negative, so I'm going like minus one volts, minus two. So it means I'm just pushing the voltage the, the other way around the circuit. By doing that, no current flows. So no matter how high I keep going on this x-axis in the negative direction, the current won't flow. So I keep pushing more and more and more energy in, nothing flows. If I go the other way, uh, it's got a little bit of resistance at the start. So again, I've got a few, uh, a few volts. And then once I pass this particular voltage, then uh, this current starts flowing. So the current starts from dropping, sorry, the resistance drops, and then the current can flow through the diode. So a diode, uh, if you put it in the wrong way, no current can flow. You put it in the right way, you need to get it just above the starting uh, voltage, potential difference, uh, to get the current to flow. And then once it does, nice, flows nicely. A thermistor is different to everything else in relation to electricity. So mm, we've mentioned with the wire before, if you make a wire hotter, what happens to its resistance? It goes up. If you make a wire hotter, its resistance goes up. A thermistor, a thermal resistor, is the opposite. If you make a thermistor hotter, its resistance goes down. Now, this is because thermistors are made from a kind of clever magical material called a semiconductor, which means um, they have their electrons arranged differently to a conductor. So in a conductor like um, copper, the electrons were loosely bound, so we have like the nice sea of, uh, of a, those delocalized electrons, and then they can just flow through. In uh, a semiconductor, the electrons are kind of, they're called, described as loosely bound, so they're half fixed to the atom. But if you give them a little bit of energy, so like here, if you increase the temperature, what happens is those electrons get a little bit of energy, and then they can break free. And when they break free, then the resistance drops dramatically. So unlike everything else, when you increase the resistance of the thermistor, its temperature, when you increase the temperature of a thermistor, its resistance goes down. So this graph goes down like this. And so as I get hotter and hotter, what's happening is I'm releasing more and more electrons as I get hotter. So therefore there are more electrons flowing. There's a larger current, there's less resistance. makes it useful to control temperature.
And the last of the strange resistors, the light dependent resistor, or otherwise known as the LDR, is similar to the uh, thermistor, as in, in normal conditions, it has a high resistance, it's another semiconductor, but when light hits this one, those loosely bound electrons can then escape again. So the light comes in and it releases those loosely bound electrons and they can flow. So it's, it's similar to a thermistor, as in those electrons initially are quite uh, hugging onto the atom and they can't get away straight away. But if you give them a bit of energy, this in the form of light, uh, that means as it gets brighter, this way, uh, more electrons are released. So therefore, more electrons are released, the resistance goes down. So uh, now it's just a chance to look at some of these properties in relation to some questions. The current potential different graph below shows the relationship between current and potential difference for a resistor. Here we go. Here is the graph at the bottom. State the current flowing when the potential difference across the component is two volts. Where we look at the potential differences on the x-axis here, there's two volts. So you just have to go up to the line here, and then you have to go across to the current. So at two volts, you get a current of 0.2 amps. That's the first one. I've done that for you. Can you do the same? State the potential difference when the resistance flowing through the is 0.3 amps. So this one's asking a similar thing, but it's giving you the current. Work out the potential difference. Well, do what you I just did, but for 0.3 amps. And can you work out the resistance of the component? The resistance of the component. Um, remember, the equation for resistance is V equals I R. So resistance is V over I. So the best way to do that would be if you take the gradient of this line, the gradient is uh, gradient is equal to change in Y over change in X. Um, and that will actually give you one over resistance. So you have to do this to minus one, or you could do change in X over change in Y. Here we have a different IV graph, current potential different graphs for a component. Can you work out what the component is? Look back on the video, we'll see the different graphs. They all have slightly different shape. What component is it? And can you explain why that component has that shape of the graph? Why does it go up and then start to level out? Very important. Oh, and that's everything. Easy. Answer the questions. Good luck. Love you. Bye.